A pandemic of violence floods the streets of major cities as cases of the media dubbed murder virus, MV20 soar, causing those infected to go on killing sprees. Caught in the middle, police detective Angela Miller finds her only trustworthy ally in the self-proclaimed psychic PI, Gerald Henry. As the two try to navigate the violence, they are drawn into new age guru, Abra Mellon Harvest's plot to heal the planet. Harvest's missive? The world is sick, and humanity is the infection. The cure? Murder. From the twisted mind of Sean C. Baker, author of A Collection of Desires, and Shadowplay in Book One, Kim and Jesse, comes his most vicious novel yet, Murder Virus. Available where books are sold. Welcome to another episode of the Horror Vision Presents Elements of Horror. I'm Sean. I'm Missy. And I am Anthony the Anomaly. Good to have you, Mr. Anomaly. Thank you. <laughs> so I thought it prudent to invite Anthony to this. I mean, you guys have a standing in invite anyway, but um, to really double down like hey man we're doing this because you're the one really turned me on to the the moorhead and benson flicks and um we're today we're going to take a deep deep dive look at resolution the endless and something in the dirt because they're all connected somehow only Moorhead and Benson, or Benson and Moorhead, or Benson and Hedges, no. But I Ooh. feel like they've given us, there's a trickle of bread breadcrumbs they're leaving. And we're going to try and pick some of those up, chew them, and see if they're still fresh. That was a weird... Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, guys, uh, where... Where do we start with this? Do we start with and we've talked about all these movies to some degree on this on the horror vision. So the very first episode we ever did, uh, Anthony, your your pick for that, I believe, was the endless. I hadn't seen it, so we watched it. Uh I shit talked at that first viewing and then later was like, I don't know, I don't know why I I don't know what I didn't see in it because I love it. And I love resolution even more, and I, I love something to dirt. But where do we start? do we do it chronologically or do do we try to approach it? Like, I don't know. I, I'm not really sure. What do you guys think? Like, here's the thing. When the endless came out, that, that was kind of like my first interactions with them. And here's the weird part was I've been subscribed to a horror box where, you know, the subscription service where you pay what 25 a month, you get four movies. I had had, um, the first film sitting on my shelf for a good year and a half. I didn't even know I had it. So, so it was really bizarre because, like, you know, I was like, oh, these new guys are on the scene and, and they got this movie called The Endless coming out. And then I was like, oh, they have another film. And, I, you know, I just perusing my library, library. I was like, holy shit, I have it. So I was able to watch that just prior to being able to go and watch uh, The Endless. And it's it's so weird having that experience of just watching those films like pretty much like within weeks of each other which was great honestly to to kind of have a, a little bit of a reference going into the endless but i remember um sitting down and just having this really surreal experience with, with the endless and, and that's why when it was uh time to do the episode or when we finally decided we're going to go ahead and get this thing off the ground Honestly, I, I don't even remember that it was my my pick. How did it even become my pick? I know we didn't draw straws or anything. I, like I think it was just brand new. And you had, I remember you had two copies of it because you got the different covers. And 
you you pitched the I, I think we were just banding about what you know what should we do and we landed on that i think you suggested it i should say and then reading the description, you know, two brothers escape a UFO death, who escaped a UFO death cult, go back to see if it was as bad as they thought or whatever. Um, I was like, oh, UFO death cult, that's okay, that's cool. It made me think of like Marcy, Mary, Mar I can never remember the fucking name of that movie, but the one with, you know, the, another like, I've left a cult and now I'm trying to like vomit out all the programming kind of thing. So... I think I was like, yeah, let's do that. You know, it's a new movie or whatever. It was on Netflix. It was readily available. I remember it was on Netflix for a long time, yeah. uh, which I think really helped their career. And also it helped their career that, the, I mean, it's a fucking great movie. But yeah, I think that's just what it was. I, I, it wasn't so much your pick as it was like you suggested it and that rose, you know, the cream rises to the top or however they say that. Yeah, whatever. I'm cream. Sure. But um, yeah, I remember... Uh... I remember us going through and um, and I guess deciding on this flick and it just having a lasting resonance and um, you know they've they've Benson and, Benson and Hedges have gone on to do great work since then but I'll I'll still I I'll, I'll go ahead and say that my first real experience with them though is just these um, moments of wonder and intrigue. Uh, watching those first trailers to the endless because that's kind of the thing that first drew me to them and, and, and attracted me to to what they were about or or the uh, the world that they were building at that point. And um, so I still say that that's the one that kind of drew me in, even though I I did watch them in order. But um, yeah, I still I still find it uh, to be. I think the endless was the focal point of fascination for me. Then, mm -hmm. so just in my opinion, that's kind of like where I where I begin with them. I don't know. Well, it's different I think for everybody. That's the, and I think Missy. So you just watched these, and I think you said, "Like, tell us about your experience." I think you said you like the endless the best out of the three, right? I did. Um, I just watched them. In fact, a few days ago, I watched them back to back. I kind of marathoned them them all day um and i watched them in order but i mean i wasn't resolution was interesting but i i didn't really connect with it until the end i thought the endless was fantastic and then i really enjoyed something in the dirt although the first time i watched it it didn't it didn't quite click that took a second viewing to really get a better grasp of what they were trying to say um but the endless is the one that i found the most interesting that had characters i genuinely cared about um and they just made more of an impact i'm not a hundred percent sure how i feel about resolution it's still I think he had good idea. I think they had good ideas, and I can see um, how it helped them get to the endless and then something in the dirt, which I thought were both excellent films. Um, but resolution is just missing something for me. I don't think they fully realized what they were trying to do until the endless, and and I don't know. You can it. The resolution doesn't feel like it's complete. Like something's missing. Um, and I also thought it was really, like, I don't know if it's the fact that Benson and Warhead are actually playing the lead characters in both Endless and Something in the Dirt, so maybe that's why it feels like their message gets through clearer, mm -hmm. since they are the main characters. And resolution, they're not. I mean, they pop in, but just for a minute. I can see where you're going with that. Um, and, and also, like, looking at some of their other stuff, I, I kind of would like the idea of them to step back and just take on direction, like, solely. Because um, I think both of those guys... Uh, 
working together behind the camera and, and in the writing, I think that's where they really shine. I kind of hope they didn't want to do that thing where it's like, okay, we've got a new movie coming out. Expect us to be the leads in it also mm -hmm. again. Because mm -hmm. um, like if you go back and you look at Spring, Spring is just this beautiful burst of color. Missy, have you seen Spring? I have not seen it yet. It's on my list after watching these. I'm going to watch it soon. But I've. It, um, yeah, it is literally one of the most beautiful films ever. Okay. And this is the first exposure I've had to them. I've heard you guys talk about it on Horror Vision before. And Sean has told me to watch The Endless for a while. And I would just kind of forget about it, um, meaning to, and then get sidetracked. But I would watch more of their movies for sure. I don't know anything about Spring, but I'm pretty sure it's on Shutter. Yeah, it's is it? I may, it may or may not be. I think, it, sure. I um, think I it is. It's accessible. It drops in and yeah. out periodically, but I think it currently is on there. It shouldn't be too okay, hard. Okay, I'll to try find. to watch it soon. It's just this beautiful burst of color and characters, and at the core of it, like it's a monster movie, which is really okay. odd because it doesn't mesh well. well it it's not supposed to mesh with what's what else is happening and it just blends so beautifully it's it's a fantastic movie i, I really can't okay. recommend that one enough that one is stunning has nothing to do with these three films but it's it's one of those things where it's like i'd like to see them take more of a step back and focus more on i'd like to see them return back to these three films and if they do feel like expanding it but to take a step back from the acting and really flesh out and tell the story that's in there because you you do get it in bread in breadcrumbs from film to film, which is odd because there's there's something underlying that's so big, and clearly it's big because it sits at the bottom of a fucking lake in the endless. Yeah. We don't know what it is. All we know is it's massive. But right. there, there's these, you know, there's these things that are hinted at, but that are never really fully realized. And they're out there. And maybe that's the intrigue of their films is that they're not exposing it to you and rubbing it in your face. But I would like to see it veer toward that. Like, if you're going to leave this thing open or just have it just be this thing that exists, I mean, sure, keep doing what you're doing. But I, I don't know. I just, I think of these three films... The Endless is the closest to a fleshed out story and it has characters and elements to it that are endearing and performances that are, you know, outstanding that you that stick with me to this day since I've first seen it. And, you know, which obviously makes it one of those movies that I go back to very frequently. But there's something, there's a much larger picture to be told and maybe i'm just you know circling back around to that again and i would like to see them step away from the acting and show that and tell that story so i think that's what i want from the series but in the interim i mean it's not like these little side jaunts aren't good or aren't entertaining because they are fun little bits something in the dirt is extremely hilarious I, I can't count how many times I laughed out in hysterics during the, the theatrical screening for this. It's it's fucking funny. Uh, upon uh, my most recent viewing, which actually I wrapped up today, probably about an hour ago, um, there there is a lot to... It feels like there's... I, I see where it changed, th changed things together, barely but it makes me want to go back to have more of the endless not more of where something in the dirt goes i don't know maybe that's no well that, it's funny you not... say that because i happened to read the other day and this this was a relatively recent article it was either the beginning of march or the end of february they're developing the endless as a television series and they're gonna wow. they're For... they're gonna i I don't know if it's going to continue their story after, show their story before, both, neither, redo it. I don't know, but they are going to flesh it out in in a for, television format. So whether or not 
I don't I it didn't say they were doing it for a specific network, so I don't know if they're doing it like I mean somebody's gotta be funding it. So I, I don't know. I'm I'm I don't know if they're writing the script on spec and hoping it, you know, but I mean they get things done, so I have no doubt they also have the Disney connections, right? From doing um uh Moon Knight and Loki. So I mean, I'm not saying it's gonna be a Disney movie, but obviously they see something in them. And then, you know, we have Synchronic, which is had, you know, Anthony Mackie, um, who's a fairly big star and tied into the Disney movies as Captain America now. Um, he loves them, right? Didn't I, I if I'm not mistaken, when I saw uh Synchronic, Ray and I went and saw Synchronic at the Tiki drive through in, I can never remember the name of the city, but uh, when Beyond Fest in 2020 for COVID, it was at a dry, drive in. And uh, Benson and Moorhead were filming something in the dirt at the time. So they they had recorded like an intro message and they looked like, I remember um, uh, Benson having the long hair and thinking, like, what the hell? Uh, so they were in the midst of filming that. Because they filmed something in the dirt during lockdown. It's just them and the producer. Those are the only people involved um, in the actual day-to-day -day shooting. Uh, but, you know, and I believe Anthony Mackie did a intro as well and talked about how he really liked these guys and saw what they were doing and, you know, want to be a part of it or whatever. So they have some ties to Deep Pocket. So I do think that that, while it's in development now, I think we'll see that. And I'm curious to see what they do, A, with that format, and B, I don't feel like they're if they redo it, quote unquote, I would. I don't think they're going to redo it, but here's the thing. Technically, they could redo it because it just parts of it just start over. And it's where you get into a slippery slope with these where like, OK, you're you're both right in that. Missy, you said resolution feels like it's missing something. And Anthony, you said the endless mm -hmm. is really the only one of the three that seems to have a beginning, a middle and end. And I'll just say. In resol I think that's intentional because in resolution, when Mike is talking to Byron, the French guy, he's literally goes through this whole thing where he's turning a mirror and he's like, beginning, middle, end, beginning, middle, end. And the last time he says end, he shines the reflection exactly on Mike's face. And then shortly thereafter, the movie ends with them telling whatever is in control, which is the audience slash filmmakers, can we try it a different way? And then they pop up in the endless trying it a different way. So I feel like they're really like the same movie. Like they're almost like episodes of a show. So I'm curious if they might go back and like somehow, I mean, it, they would have to recast at this point. Cause even in the endless, you can see that the actors that play uh, Mike and Chris have aged a little bit. It's not egregious, but it's definitely there. Um, they look slightly different for people trapped in a loop. But then that also, like, I found myself wondering, if you're trapped in a loop, do you age? Or do you just stay the same? You must not age, because the guy from the fucking covered wagon times that's in the fucking, you know, 10, five-second loop, he's, mm -hmm. he, he, don't, I, he couldn't have aged, right? Or he'd be dead. So I'm not sure how exactly the, like, that works. But I do think well, that's intentional. They make reference to that also. Yeah, they make reference to that towards like uh, the, the the counselor gal. She was like, "Yeah, she's you know you know she's like twenty years older than you, right?" And she's like, "She doesn't look like she's aged a day because she hasn't." So I don't, I don't think right. any of them have. Yeah, I don't think any of them have, and I think that was I think they make reference to like, oh, well, you know, just eating good and something along those lines. I can't remember what it was, but yeah, it's clear that they don't. They, they've kind of established that that if you're stuck in a loop, you're not aging. You're not aging, sense. but but then this, so that was exactly what got me thinking about the aging in these loops and the fact that, so there's this big thing where um, Justin, I think, because I think in the Endless, they just go by their own first names, right? Justin and Aaron, right? So yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Justin is like, sees that Aaron is, is kind of like hitting it off with, uh, I forget her name now, but the girl. And he says things like Anna. that, like, yeah, he says, dude, she's a fucking pedophile. She used to make eyes at you when you were little or whatever. And it, it led me to believe. So then I was like, well, wait a minute. If their loop starts over, if their original loop included those brothers being dragged in after the car accident, raised there, leaving, 
if that starts over, I mean, so all, everybody else's loop seems to, like, so the five second guy, it's the same loop. Now, because it's five seconds, I guess he doesn't really have much of a chance to, to do anything before it resets. But how much play do you have in that time? In other words, like, every time the camps, Camp Arcadia's loop resets, do they pull the young brothers out, bring them in, and then watch them leave? deface them to the public and then go come back and like is this is all of that so even though it's not affecting that version of the brothers is it creating these like other versions yeah i I don't think so because they're able to keep their 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 mindset intact in fact even hone skills much like that guy with all the magic tricks and stuff like that Mm -hmm. like um he he's able to retain you know obviously muscle memory and and memory a million hours and yeah, and then even able to much like what's his name? Uh, is it Shitty? What's his name? The guy that that's Shitty Carl, around, grumpy all the time. That's Shitty Carl, who's constant. He knows his time is coming up soon, and he has to go and find some way to kill himself, yeah. which is probably you know is usually new. Um, worst case scenario, he's got to use rope or what have you. Um, so they, that that consciousness doesn't disappear or go away. In fact, the residents of Arcadia know when it's happening. They've even developed ritual around it. It's like, okay, let's gather around the fire. They stand there and they're gone. And then the next day they're back. So so I I don't think it's necessarily time resetting. I still think time goes on around them. However, it's odd that, like like you said, time goes on around them. They don't age. Uh, Justin and Aaron do age because they're outside of it now what the bigger question was before was are they still stuck inside of a loop outside of arcadia and then i remember that was the the bigger question that we'd asked to ourselves prior was does that loop that they're in intersect with the tail end of the i guess arcadians loop does that, does that, you know, do those two loops intersect? And then the other question that we asked beyond that point was, how many loops exist outside of Arcadia? How large could they be? Um, I think that was kind of the, the, the theories that kind of drug us into the excitement of whatever Synchronic was originally supposed to be. Uh, because I remember Synchronic was supposed to be about people that had escaped the loop there was a story about people that had escaped the loops and then that was going to also reveal how big they are how widespread they are like we were supposed to see more of that stuff so then by the time synchronic came out and it was this other thing about smoking red dope i was just like okay i no, I, I see you know this is the connection that's it's not about smoking red dope, though. So Missy hasn't seen it, but but just real quick, and it's not a spoiler. Synchronic is about a drug. It's it, Synchronic follows two paramedics in New Orleans that that are there are people taking a drug, and when you take the drug, like if you took the drug right now, it would displace you in time, but not location. So in other words, like it opens with somebody in a motel room taking it. They're in a motel room in present day, and then when the drug kicks in, they're in the Louisiana like jungle and like like Ponce de Leon time, right? So these like like Spanish explorers find them. So it's basically you're exactly where you are, except displaced in time. So you might be, you know, who knows? Like if you went back to the 70s, you went back to the 1700s, you'd see whatever was where your apartment and your bedroom is right there. You'd see that. But the way it ties in. The drug is they at some point the guy that makes the drug shows up and says I make it from this plant that grows in the California desert, and it's the red so it's the red tobacco, or whatever okay. the fuck it is that they're smoking in all the movies. Is this a full length movie or it's a yeah it's a full length movie it's full it's good I mean okay. it's just like Anthony said and I don't remember where those original ideas about it what it was supposed to have been i don't remember if that was from their mouths or if that was speculation or whatever but i had forgotten all about that that like the i reading that like oh it's going to be about people that escape the loop and how big it is so i don't know that might not have even been something they had said that could have been 
conjecture. Okay. I remember reading it from articles and whatnot, um, especially being obsessed with the endless at that point. Um, but you're right. It might have been hearsay, and it's been so long now. I honestly can't remember. Probably should have yeah. fact checked that. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, uh, it was just kind of odd to see what became of it. Um, but a thrill to see them talk about ties between the endless and it and it's a minute thing that doesn't even happen that you know about unless you were in the room with Benson and Morhen hearing them talk about the film um, and I think the only thing that it is really is just the struggle um, yeah and that, that that's literally the only thing that ties the two, the two films together beyond that because there are extraterrestrial, I guess perhaps terrestrial, extraterrestrial um, ties between the films, but they are, Sean brought up an interesting idea earlier today when he was, he, he spoke about um, uh, Justin's character possibly being in a time loop from the beginning of the film uh, to the end of the film where he's waking up and in the same clothing I'm yeah still it's not the sure. same shot it's e it's even this i checked yeah. it right before i sent the link the beginning of the movie yeah he wakes up laying on the ground his hair is in his face he stands up it's the same shot the last time you see him in the movie before we go into that final interview segment with um i don't remember their names now and oh levi and and john so levi, levi and john. yeah so you see that shot of Levi waking up again. And then it cuts to the thing with John where it's kind of his like, you know, like, Oh, well, if you got to go or whatever, and he like lights a cigarette, um, you have any questions for me? So it did make me wonder. And then also obviously the tie that they go to camp Arcadia, but it's not there. Um, or I guess maybe it's not the camp, but it's the area because you see those weird little signposts. Um, yeah. I'm I'm kind of leaning earlier I was thinking like dude he's in a loop because also like they show he walks in he gets up he looks out the window and sees John drive by on a scooter outside on the sidewalk he, he they haven't met yet he goes to the closet he picks up a it's a scuba mask and a snorkel and then he's got a fucking fist full of dat tapes and then he goes into the closet and the ashtray the crystal ashtray is there and so is a little seed and then you can see in the closet, there's all this weird writing that looks like physics writing or something. And mm -hmm. then he goes down and introduces himself, um, which makes me, that actually definitely makes me wonder. I had thought, I had said to you, Anthony, I think they're in a loop, but now it's like, with the, maybe it's just Levi in a loop or maybe none of them. It could also, just by putting that shot at the end and it's just one frame or not one frame, but it's just so brief of him waking up again in the same position, same shot blocking they could have just done that to fuck with us and make us think like oh maybe it's a loop but i will get back to the closet well, because that's the crux of my theory now well yeah the, the, all the the equations on the closet harkens back to the quote-unquote cult leaders equation that he has on yeah. his chalkboard that you know, you know um, justin asked him you guys you ever figure it out and um there's another another tie-in which is funny because again something in the closet that ties to the uh the endless yeah um, does missy know what the the other bit was did you did you tell her about what uh benson and hedges talked about i recognized like i figured that the the writing in the closet was the same as the equation but i still missed um, cause I was watching for it too, so I don't know how I missed it the second time, but you had said that the rope is, um, you know, that they're on the other end of the rope in the struggle. When does that happen? Cause I, if I only blink, know because you told me I've watched it twice and I missed it both times. If you blink, you'll miss it. So there's a scene about 
maybe 60% of the way through the movie, maybe a little further, where one of them says, I, I, I had this dream, but I don't know if it really happened. I'm paraphrasing, but it's that's the gist. And when he says that, it cuts to okay. them, and I think it's Levi holding the rope and John behind him, like, yelling, and it looks like they're pulling, and it looks like there's, And like, it looks flames. like they're getting burned? Yeah, that's the rope. Okay. I didn't realize that's what was happening. Yeah, well, I the first time Anthony and I saw okay. it didn't pick it up, but they spoke after the after that screening and they met and they're like, you know, like the other end of the rope. And we were both like, Are you fucking kidding me? Like I remembered seeing the scene, but didn't get that they were even pulling a rope or whatever. So it's easy Same. to miss. It's very easy to miss. And I wanted to stand up in the theaters and say, You shut up. You shut up, you son of a bitch, you shut up. <laughs> you just blew my fucking mind. You just blew my mind. You sh- shut up. <laughs> I, I didn't. I didn't do that out of respect because I really did enjoy the film. And I, but I was genuinely mind blown by that. I was like, really? You yeah. had to throw that in there and just fucking happen to mention to it at a live thing where, like, are you fucking serious? It was so bizarre, but really fucking cool to where they're like. They're that down to earth where they're going to sit there and like share that with you. They're going to sit down and like, yeah, clue you in on yeah. their inside shit that they have going on. Because they they want to build that sense of community and and let their fans know that they are a part of it and that we are important. So it's so yeah. cool to be there with them. I totally wanted to steal that guy's shirt. I mean, physically accost him in a restroom and just steal his shirt and stay at home and snip it. Did you? You can edit that out. No, <laughs> I'll leave that. I'll leave the episode with that. Um, <laughs> Missy, oh, geez, Missy, Chris. Missy, did you see any? Like, what's your take? Did you any between any of the three? I mean, there's the obvious ties, right? Like the where they they run into the brothers proselytizing in resolution or whatever. And then it's on the video right. in, in the endless, but what, like it, anything that like really blew, like where you were like, Oh my God. Oh, and something in the dirt. Um, I'm still, I mean, I don't have exact proof or anything, but I'm still convinced that John is from that same cult. The, the cult from the endless. Could very well um, be. I, like you, you said you hadn't, you hadn't come to that conclusion. I hadn't even thought of that. I so you like kind of blew I my mind when you from said the it. Very, like very, from the very beginning, even when, like when he first meets Levi, um, and he tells him he can use his Wi-Fi, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, the network is like I think it's the promised land, and the password is like Judgment Day. Yeah. A- and then there's the equations that look like the same kind of weird math from the endless. I mean, for all we know, John did it. Yeah. Like all the shit in Levi's closet. He said that apartment was abandoned for you know like five, six years or something. Like maybe he's been doing shit up there in the closet. I'm I'm gonna interject this here, and then I'll I'm just gonna. So, okay, I think the closet is the thing that ties it, and here's here's the reason why I say this. So in resolution, while Chris is chained to the to the um, pipe, Mike becomes obsessed with because somebody's leaving them messages, and he finds all this recording equipment, and these journals, and and a, a record, and it seems to have stories on it. So he kind of becomes obsessed right. because he also has nothing else to do, right? So he goes at one point and he visits this Frenchman in a trailer. Uh, the trailer has a makeshift license plate that says 9683. I don't know if that's significant. I as soon, I don't know. I'm just going to throw out some stuff here. But when he talks to him, the guy's name is Byron. He's smoking the red weed. Mm-hmm. And Byron was there with two French researchers who he said he thinks came, well, he says um, 
they were they were researching carbon dating. So at some point they mentioned folklores and mythology, but also he says something about them and carbon dating. And there's also um, he says some of the papers that they left behind. It's esoteric writings about manipulating light and sound waves. Okay. And and they disappeared, and there was no record of them when he tried to contact the supposed university they were from. I think that closet acts as some kind of a portal in and out of the loops, and that's why it causes these aberrations that Levi and John observe and become obsessed with to some degree. But... At that beginning, when he looks, when Levi gets up and sees the ashtrays, the dat tapes really bothers me because that to me implies that it's happened. Because there's no other, like, I don't know why else he has those tapes. Or I don't know if they're dad or video, whatever they are. Um, But he goes into the closet, the ashtrays there, almost like he expects to find it. And then there's that seed. So the Frenchman in Resolution. When Mike's like, oh, what what is that? I've never seen you know weed that color before. And he says, I got this, I grow them from seeds I got in South America. They plant, they grow very nicely on the hillside out here this time. The seed eventually becomes the interdimensional fruit, in mm -hmm. I believe, in something in the dirt. So I think that is one organism. It's coming from South America. Byron has brought it to the deserts of Southern California. And then it ends up in the closet and then grow. So I think, and then the whole thing with the rope going to Camp Arcadia, I don't, I think maybe the French research students were in that apartment at some point. But I don't know if, if does this like maybe displace them in time? Like we don't really know when Byron got there. I mean, it would have to be modern if they're studying, if he in, encountering these people studying how to manipulate light and sound waves. But um, I don't know. I just feel like, so that fruit is what the, is eventually dried out and becomes the red weed, which we know from Synchronic can displace you in time. So I'm just thinking like, who knows what, what year these students were from? Did they bring it with them? Um, I, I don't know. I mean, it's not it's not much of a connection, and it definitely doesn't give us anything definitive, but th there is nothing definitive. So that's the best I can do, is I think it has something to do with the French research students, the seed and the plant and the weed being the same thing, and then some kind of extraction point from the loops and some kind of time displacement. That's all I got. So you think you know, the French students opened the gate? Well, and also, so the, the other thing is the French students, if they were studying carbon dating, John and Levi go to people that are studying carbon. And on, fuck, on top of it, isn't one of the women that's in something in the dirt French? Like they're interviewing a woman that was an editor. And I think, I forget if she's Italian or French. So I'm being a total like ethnist right now. But there's a woman that speaks in a, a different language. And I think she's French. I think it was French. It might be. I thought she was Italian, but then you're didn't probably sound right. Like a French you... accent to me. Okay, so I don't remember. I just remember she wasn't speaking English. I didn't remember the accent, so maybe she was Italian. So okay, you probably have a clearer memory of it than I do. So it's probably Italian. So remove that. But otherwise, I I mean I'm not sure. You might be right. It it seems like did they go to them for carbon dating and then they somehow are manipulating or like. I, and the other thing is, neither John or Levi, you can't believe a fucking word either one of them says in the whole guy. And and in fact, like, I mean, we don't even know if half of what we're seeing is real because is it just reenact? Is the whole movie reenactment? You know, like, I who knows, right? I don't know. It's it's interesting. I think upon what you just said about the closet being a passageway out of the loop 
makes me feel a little different now about the next time I go into watching The Endless. Because instead of an ominous feeling when you're watching them do the struggle and that really like that that scene is unnerving um when you see the rope go up and you know they're tugging or and whatnot but it, it's i feel like it would be odd because it'd be one of those things now where it's not ominous because it's not a um it's not a um monstrous entity that's behind it that it it's it's your way it's like this is your way out stupid um almost like the rope is a beacon of hope now i'm wondering how it's going to affect my next viewing of the the endless because that it it makes sense that that would be the way out if anything but um I also wonder if any of them have actually seen it. Um, Cause I don't think the, the entity or whatever it is that's, that's manipulating um, time and space around everybody with the loops has ever really, it, it, they're never, again, going back to what I said before, the idea isn't fleshed out enough. I, I, I don't know if anybody's ever seen it or necessarily knows what it looks like. We just know that it's massive. And that it sits at the bottom of the lake. That's it. That's all we know about it. Um, but that would be a really interesting way of looking at the endless next time, whereas the rope is a means to escape. Uh, oh, I think that'd be pretty interesting to, 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 to think and that hopefully one day one of them would figure it out. And, mm -hmm. But I wonder, yeah, I wondered why it would be a thing where it was like, okay, well, let's just play a game with it and not let's climb the rope, opposed to let's uh -huh. just play tug of war with it. Like, it's clearly not a dog to, you know, uh, play tug with, you know what I mean? Like, it's something much, much more. So I don't understand why that would be. But then again, also, I mean, we, we also have to keep in mind that that entity is is toying with people, which is why it puts them in these loops because it does it for entertainment and, it, and if you don't comply uh, and aren't willing to play the game then it will do something awful to you and whatever it does is far worse than whatever it is you do to yourself for amusement like the guys from the first film who are like yeah you should get the fuck out of here we're about to uh, you know light each other light ourselves on fire and you know you, you should probably split and take off as soon as you can you know, uh, take it easy and then, you know, like burn themselves alive again, which is far better than whatever it is that's coming after them will do to them if they don't comply. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where we get to the element of horror for these films, because they're not scary. No, they um, they do lead. Um, they do lead you into a great sense of wonder. And. Uh, a whole lot of confused confusing uh bits but i think that is the scary part is what is it that's out there that is so horrifying that you're willing to uh, you're willing to off yourself to appease it and i think that's uh that's the thing that's always been that's the scary part about it like what's the, not the cult but the um the entity itself. What it, what is it out there that's so horrifying that it, you're willing to blow your head off every ten seconds, opposed to dealing with that guy or dealing with that thing, like the the you know the old timer in the tent that just keeps blowing his head off every couple of, you know what, right. three seconds or something like that, which is shitty. That's a it shitty five. existence. But, yeah, it's a shitty existence, but he's willing to do that than face the wrath of that thing, and it's merely for its amusement. I think that's the scary part about it. What about you guys? What do you think is the, what is the element of horror in these films that, that brings you, you know, joy? No, <laughs> what, what, what is it? What is it that, uh, is that tie for you guys? What is it? Um, I mean, I, 
initially I was hoping it was going to be a monster, especially when we had that scene in the endless um, with with the boat and you could see the massive silhouette. Um, it's both cool and I'm a, a little bit sad finding out that the thing in the closet is actually just Levi and John. I wanted it to be a monster. Um, but I think the horror part to me is the like the level of obsession these people have and like I don't even know if they know that they could do anything to fight back or change it. Like the guy who's stuck in the five minute or the five second loop, he doesn't have the luxury of time to even think about doing something else. But like, I didn't get the impression they were killing themselves to appease it. I thought they were killing themselves because they didn't want to be stuck in a loop. And They're they killing themselves to, to rob it, that they want to rob it of its pleasure watching what happens. And okay. and they all, they think maybe if I do something, like Shitty Carl thinks, if I blow my head off, maybe I'll get out. Oh, no, God damn it. But th that's why. They're trying to, okay. it's basically fuck you. Okay, okay. But, I mean, to me, anything where I don't have control, where I can't do something to change the situation to make it better for myself, like, that's scary. Mm -hmm. I don't like not feel. I don't like feeling like I don't have a choice. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how it, I mean, that's how I took it. Um, although, it changes things a little bit. Hearing how you guys were reacting to the, the, the them killing themselves, because I thought they were just doing it to escape. Um, so thanks for the clarification. Like I, I like that a little better. What about you, Sean? What's the what's the element of horror that you see in all this in these films? I mean, it's that. It's like what both of you said: the lack of control. Um, the I mean, so the the thing with the rope, I it, I never like the first time I watched it, I felt an ominous vibe from it. The second time I watched it, it lessened. Now I don't ever feel an ominous vibe from that at all. Um, I don't know that it is definitively Levi and John on the other end, but that also could go to uh -huh. like there's a, a a maturation period for these loops, and I'm not entirely sure how that works, i.e. Like, why is it there's a scene in, in The Endless where Aaron steps through the markers and sees Anna, but she doesn't see him, right? Or no, no, I'm sorry. They don't see one another. Neither one of them sees one another. There's another scene where I think it's Justin sees a mountain lion, and it doesn't see him. But why does he see it? So he's, it's one way there, but for Anna and Aaron, neither one of them see each other. And I think this goes to, I put a lot of time thinking about the two and three moons. So the reflections, obviously. But So the whole, you need to leave before the full, the third moon gets full, I think is because, and this explains why. So when Anna and Aaron, although see, that doesn't work because it's, I think it's reversed. I was going to say, if the, if literally there's that bubble, right? So if that's, and Byron in Resolution says, when I look into the infinite, I see a film. And beyond that, another film. And beyond that, another film. And then he starts playing with the mirror for the reflections. So, okay, he's smoking the red shit, he sees this film. Well, when Anna and Aaron smoke the red shit, they can see the film looking over the valley. You can literally see, like, the walls of the loop, right? So I was thinking, so does the wall grow and then that's why you add a, a reflect a third reflection that slowly becomes full. I, I, I don't know. I thought I had that, but I, I think Aaron and Anna happens first, so the wall would be higher. And I think Justin and the, the mountain lion happens later, so it would have to be vice versa. That could also explain why when they go to Arcadia in, in the, the third film that they're not able to see anybody because they're behind that mirrored, mirrored yeah. image or mirrored wall. But just just that that other, you know, it's it. People call this, and since before I saw it, I remember like like 
re reviews or whatever referencing this Lovecraftian, and it, which is a term that is just hideously overused. But I actually think this is Lovecraftian, not in that it has anything to do with like the Cthulhu mythos. I think it's the whole thing with cosmic horror and Lovecraft, especially, is like you're powerless in the face of these larger forces in the cosmos. And that's exactly what we're fucking talking about here. So therein, like, and, and there's a, there's, so when Mike in the endless is no, when Ju Justin in the endless visits Mike and Chris from resolution, there's this awesome fucking quote that Chris, I'm getting my, all my names confused here. When Justin in the endless visits the cabin in resolution and he sees Mike and Chris, Chris, who's chained to the thing says, Man, if I could just impart some wisdom on you. I wish I had written down the exact quote. I thought that I did, and I don't fucking have it. But he basically says, like, don't don't succumb to it. Just just go get past it. I mean, and it's so clear. He's it's the filmmakers talking about life, right? Because we're all at the mercy of powers that we have no control over. And it's just it's a really beautiful sentiment, and I love they put it in his mouth because he's probably my favorite character in the entire in all of the films. I just absolutely adore Mike and Chris, but Chris especially, um, not to have, not the least of reasons being because he's fucking hysterical. Something I picked up like, right the the entity that you know is obsessed with stories and like to play with humans. I find it interesting all the different ways that it will try to com communicate with them. And we especially see it a lot in something in the dirt um, with the Morse code in like traffic. It, it's in traffic. They were using Morse code with the headlamps and in lights. Mm -hmm. um, and then even, even in the, the seeds of the inter intergalactic fruit. Interdimensional. Like, or interdimensional fruit, right? Um, like I found that kind of kind of mind blowing, um, and it seems like this creature or entity, it like it can communicate with everything. I mean, it's using old technology like records. I mean, it's manipulating the seeds and the fruit, like. I have no idea what the creature is, but I I love stories and the idea that this creature, this entity or creature or deity, whatever the fuck it is, is obsessed with stories and that's how it communicates with people is the thing I like best about all three of these movies. Mm -hmm. I've often asked myself the question, is it merciful? you see these other people who have to off themselves and it looks like through camera angles that it's coming for them if they don't do what it wants but with the cult members they like i said it's very become very ritualistic at this point now they kind of gather around the fire they stand in their spot you see kind of like light and then they're gone mm -hmm. so i wonder if this is because they've offered like ultimate submission to it and this is like its mercy toward toward them i i've i've wondered that since probably the third time i saw it i was like why is this thing so fucking mean to everyone else except them that's what and, it is. Um, i've i've wondered if it's one of those things where it's like we've pledged fealty to to you oh our god is an awesome god and and um you know is is that the the end result of uh, of said fealty? Like, okay, well, I'll be merciful on upon ending your loop, so that when you come back, you know, it basically gives you something painless. Mm -hmm. I've I've wondered I wondered if any any of you picked up on that as how how it it seems to play with its its toys a little more aggressively with with others. Than, than the ones that are in the cult. I don't know if any of you guys picked up on that. No, I I mean, I, I think I did. Um, I think you put it in words better. Um, but it, I mean, 
the people in the cult have the they have the longest loop. It pretty much leaves them alone. I mean, they gather at the end and they kind of blink out, and then tomorrow they come back. Like nothing really changes for them. Where anybody else we saw die died like horribly like setting themselves on fire. I'm still kind of confused about what happened to Levi. Um, did he, if he jumped or if he got crunched in an earthquake, you got that really quick flash of his body all like folded up. And I tried to freeze frame it to get a better look. but He floats up into the atmosphere and then falls. So that actually happened. I thought that part was like in his head. No, I think I, that's how I took it. Because remember, he keeps, he wakes up that one time and he's floating and then falls or whatever. And I think there's even a point where mm -hmm. one of them says, like, you know, something to the effect of, like, oh, but that was roof. with John that woke up and right. Oh, that's we saw right. him, like, floating. I, we didn't see it happen to Levi, I don't think. That's right. No, you're right. It was John. But I, I just think, I think it took him probably from the, fire escape i guess and uh because that's okay. the last i think you see him looking in the fire escape and then it goes to like them talking about what happened and then there's that shot of him like airplane high okay and there's that brief moment where you see the crystal is like kind of starting to come into view like mm -hmm. by the by the moon yeah and then you yeah, yeah, see yeah. It start to come down little by little so then it does drop out and shatter on the ground which is pretty interesting but um yeah, so I mean that's that's basically what is alluded to. He gets whisked away into the into the sky during the evening and okay, and then it dropped dropped ever so mercilessly. <laughs> Which okay. that, that that goes in with the thing he keeps like you can only fall like the whole movie he's talking about falling, which also makes yeah. me think it's a loop because you know he brings up that you know this guy at my bar he said like you know you can only fall so fast or whatever like he there's many. Mm -hmm. there, I, his sister fell. There's like so many of these things, and I feel like he's aware of it on some level. So I really am wondering if he's the one that's in the fucking loop. Um, Levi. Levi, yeah. I mean, not that neither one of them may be. You know, all of our this is all conjecture, right? For the listeners, like I, okay. it's like I said about Yellow Jackets yeah. last week. I'm probably wrong about it. I thought they both were in the loop. That was my original thinking, but. But I'm not. I'm not entirely sure. Um, there's so much stuff in this movie, but also resol there's so much stuff in resolution that I didn't re like. Just little things where it's like, is that going to play out later? Like the French st or the 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 research students or like. Remember, there's a part where Mike comes back and like there's a fucking quote unquote mortgage. But you know, the, you know the sign that says "I buy houses for cash." That's me, Ted Talloway or whatever the fuck his name is. Like. What's right. the point? What's the point of that being there if it's not like I feel like there's something, but we may not see some of this stuff ever again, or we might not see it until wait because they're going to make a bunch of movies and maybe shows, and you know I think to some degree it all tie together. I don't think it'll be obnoxious like all the shared comic book continuity, um, which I like to varying degrees, but I don't want this to be that right. Right. Yeah. But my big takeaway from the film is this. You're a fuck up, you're a criminal, and you have a low IQ. And that just really resonated with me. And that's why I like this movie so much. I love that fucking line. He's just like, you're a fuck up, you're a criminal, and you have a low IQ. That's uh, that's my takeaway from something in the dirt. Right. Other than all the uh, timey wimey stuff. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I don't know. But still, one of my favorite lines from that movie. I don't know. What else do y'all have to add to the conversation? What else do you want to talk about as far as the film goes? Or three films? Um, I thought Okay. I was one of the one of the things that like really resonated with me, and I mean, I don't know if it's even entirely true because we know Levi lies about everything, was the 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 nineteen oh eight. We see it on the film reel, and they listen to the radio station um, and stuff. That 
but that Levi actually that he had it tattooed on his hand, which I mean maybe that means he is stuck in the loop because um and maybe he's like conjuring that number to begin with because um it's tattooed on his hand and when John's looking at it he says well it's it's not a year it's the number of days that I spent in a mental institution when I was a teenager so I wonder if he's like the people stuck in the loops are they manifesting some of the imagery that we're seeing in these messages. Oh, that's interesting. And also, was Levi at the mental facility that the woman who'd escaped from the the uh, endless, which she was, and from Resolution? Remember, she was there peeking through the yep. window, staring at at them sleep. It was he from that 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 mental institution? That's awesome. I didn't even yeah. think of that. Yeah. But that probably everything else is connected. Good for that. We could do this all night. This, these guys are <laughs> fucking. No, I'm serious. But I mean, that's yeah. that's the that's the depth of thought that goes into the lore that they put into these movies, and that's that's what I love about these guys as directors. It's just like there's you could be talking about these movies years after the fact and still continue to find shit bring it up to him like oh you caught that huh you finally caught that huh? <laughs> like, that's, that's, that's the kind of shit that i love about these guys it's it's just it's full of its own easter eggs and yeah and i'm sure in a year if this gets brought up again on the show we'll still have new shit to talk about of like course. that's what i love about these movies that there's so much there's so much uh thought and planning that goes into these um and again, I, I I feel that goes back to the uh, the love that they have for their community and for their their fans. So it's like, yeah, let's let's give these guys something lasting that that works and and um, that they can return to time and time again to enjoy not only as you know just a a single piece, but as a as as you know a pro. A, an entire project that is still fruit bearing years after it's already been released. And I, I feel like that's what they've done. And I really hope that they continue to do it. I'm excited to see what they do with the, the endless show. I don't, I don't know if I'll love it, but you know, I have a hard time sticking with television programs, but I'm sure that if I could do it with the Mandalorian, damn it, I'll do it with the endless. So <laughs> I'll figure out a way to make it work. And I'm sure I'll fucking enjoy it, you know? So I'm looking forward to where that story goes and continues. And I'm hoping that they, you know, bring back some characters that we like, like the dude who did trepidation and drilled into his own brain, things like Mylon that. And Dave. I'd like to see he's or, Mylon is it Dave. Mylon Dave? Because there's me. also there's also Hungry Dave, right? The squirrel. There is a Hungry Dave. There's a Hungry there's Dave. There's a connection. Vicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is it? Don't don't let him don't let him come to eye level with you. Yeah. <laughs> Don't let him get to eye level. <laughs> but yeah, I I'm really enjoying the new mythos that they continue to add upon with these new films, and and I'm hoping the show does more so with it. And who knows? Hopefully, they'll do another film that returns back to this, um, you know, the story and and fleshes it out even more so. But um, the thing that I can say that I've said, you know, in previous episodes and whatnot is that I love Benson and Moorhead. I'm always looking forward to what they're doing. I'm always looking forward to whatever it is they're bringing to the table because it's mm -hmm. basically at this point guaranteed to be something that's A, acted well, um, B, shot beautifully, and C, something that will make you think um, for a time to come. And that's uh, that's what I have to say about those three films and Benson and Moorhead. And yeah, I definitely want to check out their other movies. Um, and I loved all the different little hidden things throughout these, especially in Something in the Dirt when you start seeing the symbol everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, 
do you do you see that symbol like because you've seen these you guys have seen the other movies multiple times does it show up in resolution and the endless i don't think it does although now that you say that if it's anywhere and this is i don't think it is but if it's anywhere there's several scenes in the endless with where they're looking at birds making like being uh, having a bizarre pattern and now i'd like mm-hmm. to re rewatch that scene or those scenes with that in mind but i might be misremembering there's a scene in true detective where birds do that and i think they do like kind of a spiral scene a spiral shape so maybe i'm thinking of that because i feel like what's in the endless isn't quite as defined but i could be wrong but i don't remember seeing it otherwise do you anthony i don't and actually that reminds me of that scene that scene was really creepy to me because there and that's kind of what led me to believe that that um Justin and Aaron did in fact escape because there was an opening and you see all those birds pouring toward that opening trying yeah. to escape desperately and so yeah that's that's kind that kind of led me to believe that they did get out and maybe that's where the next story picks up but yeah if yeah you're right if there was any place in there that that did happen it might be in the bird patterns but i, I don't recall it anyway but now it's something that i'm going to go, obviously go back and pour through and see if it it was or wasn't there thanks right. for that <laughs> <laughs> well you know you're going to watch it again anyway next wednesday um absolutely absolutely <laughs> there is so i will say when they get out the first time i saw it i thought this was going to happen and it doesn't i don't think and then every time i watch it i'm like oh, oh it's not gonna happen as they're driving they it looks like they're gonna as they get out they're gonna come head on with another car and i'm like that's the accident that kills their mother so it's a loop even there but i don't think that's what happens because they they don't crash so then that makes me wonder are they seeing the reflection of the car in the membrane of the loop because that's not what it looks like to me. And I do wonder if maybe in escaping the loop, they create the crash that kills their mother and strands them to begin with somehow. But I, I don't know. That's a long I think it's, a, it's an interesting idea. But I thought it was just a reflection. It's probably we, just a when reflection. When we saw it. Yeah, I would say that because, like I said, it's not the loop isn't. Um, it doesn't. The only way it it doesn't really. How do I say it? The loop doesn't. Oh Jesus Christ! It's, so the loop continues obviously you, life continues you 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 you're able to continue on your your thought process and whatnot you keep your consciousness etc um it keeps you in a state of being young or, or being in whatever whatever age you are when you're caught in it there's continuity exactly. you're aware of everything that came before yeah you're right and it yeah. wouldn't work anyway there's so, no way so i don't, I don't it, 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 there the 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 camp arcadia has been there so long and they have not. So they just brush up against it for a period of, let's say, eight years and get out. If they had been there when it resets, then they'd also be trapped. But otherwise, they're not trapped. So there is a continuity. If the Camp Arcadia people are also in a loop, how come when Levi and John go there, there's no one there? Well, Okay, so it could either be, like Anthony said, they haven't crossed the markers into the camp, or those things are everywhere, the markers, so maybe they weren't actually at Camp Arcadia. Maybe they were just in the vicinity. That's possible, too. That because that, that had Or also like we brought up mind. with the mirror. Yeah. You know, or how we brought up the mirror image to where okay. you're not able to see what's beyond those, those yeah. boundaries. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so they might have been just behind it, just beyond the veil, you know what I mean? Yeah. You don't okay. know. But still in their own private loop. Yeah. And that, at least that's what I would allude to because it looks like it's all within the same yeah. time frame. Like it's been modern right. time, so it would still be there. Yeah. So. And also, that's what they don't care that they outed them. 
because it's just it's it doesn't really matter and then also so they're totally not a cult the thing that i got i watched this a couple months ago i watched it the other day but a couple months ago i had an epiphany when i watched it and that's the message at the bottom of the lake which is the scene from resolution where they're out proselytizing for the church or for i'm sorry not for the church for the camp the real so Justin is actually everything he accuses is the leader Dave no I forget his name um he's actually Hal? everything he yes Hal thank you he's everything he's accusing Hal of being because he's the one out there proselytizing and none of them have any interest in doing that so it's funny it's almost like the guy that like he's the zealot he's the guy that like was gay and then gets deprogrammed and then hates queers you know what i mean it's like almost a similar mindset where it's like it's like i and and hell even says you're the one that always had a problem with this almost like you wanted to lead like it's almost like justin wanted it to be this thing that it's not and so ultimately leaves and then talks shit about it but really it's just displacement the shit he's accusing them of is really was just his his mind frame and he can't you know it they wouldn't follow him so he turns against it because he's there's a lot that's wrong with him definitely i mean there's a lot wrong with both of them but definitely he seems like he's there's there's a little bit of an agenda with his brother and whatnot and i think he finally realizes like i need to just get over this shit let me ask if you could join Camp Arcadia, stay your age, live 10 years, and then die and come back again with the continuity, would you do it? No. No? No. How come? No control? No control. Yeah, I think that's that's a deal breaker. Um, I would have no, I would have to give up every desire of traveling the world. No, you wouldn't. You can leave and come back as long as you're there when it resets, right? I think. Or no. I don't think you can leave. No, no, they can leave. leave. You're right, you're right. Yeah, no, you're right. If Mike and Chris can't leave, yeah, you're right. Mike's wife is looking for him and he's, they can't leave. They're trapped in that trailer. And I think that's why if you try to leave, that's when the entity becomes upset with you because now you're spitting back in the face yeah. of something that's giving you this gift. Yeah. Quote unquote gift for, for the listeners. Um so I think that's why I couldn't do it because I would have to give up the many splendors life has to offer outside of a 30 yard radius i don't think it's for it, do you, you see how blase they're like yeah you want to bang my chick my girlfriend go ahead because like i'm tired of these people and these lives that i have to deal with for basically eternity at this point like, I don't care what happens to them, and I'm here, and I'm just a prisoner yeah. like they are. I have really nothing to live for other than trying to perfect magic tricks. Like, I have, there, there's nothing, nothing beyond that. And, yeah, so to sit down and basically succumb to a an existence that is mundane, and which a lot of us do in reality, in life, you know, um, but to, to succumb to a, an existence that's mundane and never changing. And I, I think that's, um, imagine never be, being able to go see a new movie again or read a new book or hear a new song or hear a new voice. I think that's terrifying. And I don't think life is worth living. Um, or the uh, just because there's a fear of death, mm-hmm. like I don't think I don't think there's worth. Uh, I, I don't think it's worth it. I think all the um, all the things that we're privy to in this short amount of time we have in life, 
um, it, it's, it's so vast and and should be explored to the full ex fullest extent that we can give to its exploration and yeah to to bind yourself to that one one thing for the, the sake of eternal life is just it's pointless and who says it's eternal you yeah. know who says it's eternal because eventually the thing the thing that they're bound to is also bound to rules at some point it dies too and then what you're free to die like that's that's horrific yeah well and who wants to i mean who wants to live forever really i mean it's hard enough yeah. to not that there are like there are lots of good things in life but there's lots of hard shit too and who really wants to do it forever like how crazy would you be you know yeah. after centuries of doing this over and over again and clearly it has been going on for centuries because you have that you know old settler that's been doing it for well over several hundred years yeah just <laughs> killing himself every five minutes that's no fucking way to live if you ask me no so, yeah i'm right. good with that do you have an answer to your own question sean I wouldn't. I mean, I'd be tempted. I always like the vampire mythos. I mean, I'm not really a vampire fan, but I, to me, that's enticing. However, I always think of Pete Steele in Suspended in Dusk. Like, you know, I, I have to paraphrase, like, you know, I have to watch my loves grow old and die. And, and there is something like, you know, I don't know. And also, I feel like it's placing, I mean, I'm not religious, um, it's also placing a lot of emphasis on this. And I just, I, I don't think that there's like an afterlife or something like that. I don't know what I think it is, but I don't think this is that important. I think you just look around and see this shit that you're like, how, whether it's politics or people in Florida doing what they do or, you know, like just, I mean, you just like, how does this exist? It's like, well, yeah, obviously it's a pretty, ramshackle existence so i mean if you want to tether yourself to it and then you know in the case of the endless like you said it's like yeah it's not really a good trade-off at all uh and and you would just i don't know just i would imagine it would be exhausting and if you were exhausted it would be like being exhausted and not being able to go to sleep you know so and and, and like, i have to in, become a beer snob fuck that <laughs> and well hey that that is enticing but but um you know in resolution which is always going to be my favorite of, of their movies. Um, like Mike is a fucking good guy, right? Like he is a good fucking guy and he is ready to fucking douse him and his friend in gas and fucking light the fight. Like he's pushed. You could just see he's in a state of desperation when they, when he gets Justin's visit in the endless and, uh, Man, I don't know that there's two characters in a movie I can I can tell you that I I feel more kindly for. I really like those guys a lot. Like something about well, I mean, there, there's an obvious there's a personal thing, uh, which I think I've said before, where I had a friend that had a drug problem, and like I never chained him to something, but there were there were times that this reminds me of, you know. Um, okay. Like trying to save them from themselves, and ultimately realizing it's pretty much pointless. But but I just. I just, I love them. I love those characters more than maybe any other characters I've ever met. Like, I don't know. Okay. Just as far as like, they feel like people to me. So, but um, yeah, okay. I mean, he, he's a good guy and he is just, fuck man, you know? And then the, the the painful thing is like, he's like, I hope my wife moved on. And it's like, no, she's, she's And we not... know she didn't. Well, so here's the one thing. There is a scene in The Endless where somebody drives by near the end, rides by on a bicycle real quick. And I, I don't know who it is. Unless either of you guys know definitively, I'm tempted to think that it was her leaving, hopefully, because otherwise now she's in a loop next door. And and she's miserable. So she's going to be miserable. Like, oh, God. Like, oh, man. That's just, there's a heartbreak involved in that that's just un unbelievable. It's really heavy. Um, on that note, I got to get going. Yeah. Uh, well, okay. So, Missy, we'll do closing thoughts. I, I don't really have any. That was kind of mine. Um, but, Anthony, thanks for sitting in and lending your Benson and, and Moorhead uh, viewing expertise. 
Yeah, I'm a big fan of Benson and Hedges. They're 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 solid in my book. Yeah, I agree. They're solid. Thank you guys for having me. Appreciate it. Thanks for joining us, and I thanks for like sharing your insights because I feel like I get these movies better, and, and I definitely want to go back and watch them again with like these new ideas in my head. Mm-hmm. And I I'm definitely going to check out Spring. That one oh, sounds really, do. really cool. I, I implore you, you will love it. It's a stunning. Especially film. you said it's a it's a monster movie. And yeah. I, I Boy, love monsters. Boys that ever. Boys that ever. <laughs> <All right. laughs> awesome. Y- y'all have a great evening. Thank you for having Later, me. Later, you too, man. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. So, Missy, closing thoughts or anything anything we didn't touch on that you wanted to do before closing thoughts? Um, I think the the only thing that and I had forgot about the mountain lion, but that's it's kind of cool that you brought it up because um, what I was really paying attention to in something in the dirt was the coyote mm-hmm. that Levi keeps seeing this coyote through the whole movie. Um. I mean, and you like the the Native Americans thought that like if a coyote crosses your path when you're on a journey, it's a warning to turn back. Oh. So I mean, through the whole movie, I mean, also like coyote totems, totem animals, and whatnot. Usually, the coyote is like he's a guide. To if you're feeling like down or in over your head, Coyote can show you how to get back on your feet and represents like a, adaptability, um, survival, cleverness, resourcefulness, and like getting in touch with yourself, which I think was also a message for Levi. Mm-hmm. Um, but through the whole movie, he's asking, should we stop? Should we stop doing this? Is it possible that we started doing something extremely dangerous and overlooked it? And through the whole movie, he keeps having this coyote cross his path, telling him to turn back. Oh, that's and interesting. And then by the end, he gets dropped by a storytelling entity and crunch. Um Thank you for like bringing, putting Benson and Moorhead on my radar because I these this is my first exposure. Um, I don't feel like I caught everything. I caught a lot. I love that there's so much to like this. These are the kind of movies that you can keep going back to, and you're always going to find new things. Mm-hmm. Which I love that that kind of stuff. Um, and I think it's interesting that you love Resolution so much, like that it's your favorite. Like so much, I love it. For so me, much. it was the weakest of the three, but I get it because of the way I relate to characters and stories. Mm-hmm. And I love that you found a movie that does that for you. There's also just so much shit in it that I forget. I forget. I forget. Like I, every, I just was watching part of it earlier today. I didn't get a chance to rewatch the whole movie. I had just watched it like two a couple months ago, but I didn't get a chance for this to rewatch the whole movie. But I was watching parts of it earlier, and like the the mortgage guy, like that wants to buy the like. I never remember that. There's just certain things in this movie I never fucking remember, and I think it's just because there's just. There's just so much other than like the main story of the, them and their, you know, Chris and Mike and the struggle is what right. supersedes everything else in my head. And then like a few other things like the end and like, you know, the French guy or whatever. But even like the French guy that probably the second or third time I watched this, I was like, oh, I forgot all about this shit. Like, what the hell? Um, and I do, I do think, like you said, I think a they didn't fully know what they had or were going to do, and but b also I think they had an inkling of what they were going to do. But I also think that 
it's just becoming something bigger as they go. So I don't know. I'm just, I, I checked our IMDb. There's nothing really on upcoming projects for either of them as director for producer. It says ideation. And I, I don't know what that is. Also, the thing about the TV show, I don't remember. So I did read that, but I don't remember where I read that. So also, it could be fucking bullshit. I mean, I, you know, take okay. anything you read on the internet with a fucking grain of salt. So, but right. I feel like, the, I feel like what I read, if I can find the link, I, here, everybody join me now. I'll put it in the show notes, which means I'll forget and Missy will remind <laughs> me. Um, <laughs> but if That's I can okay. find I'll the article. I'll remind you because I'm neurotic. There, there's a couple articles I'll I read remember. that I thought were pretty interesting, um, but not there's not a lot of insight into these that I found there. I'm sure there's a Reddit thread where some, you know, hardcore motherfuckers are throwing shit around. I should probably find that, but I usually don't do that before one of these because I don't want to take other people's theories and regurgitate them as my own. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. So that's the Moorhead and Benson. I would definitely say. If you get a chance, Missy, check out Synchronic next. I don't know what it's on. It's on something. I don't know what. Um, okay, I'll look for it. it. Spring, I need to rewatch, too. I only saw it once. I saw it before I saw The Endless or Resolution, and I had no idea who they were, and I really liked it. Kirsten fucking loved it. Um, but I, I might try to since. watch that tonight. If it's, cool. if it's on Shudder, I might try to watch that one tonight. I think it's on Shudder. I'm pretty sure. I know The Endless is on Shudder. I Shutter, think it Resolution's is, too. on Shudder. Right, I'm pretty sure that I saw it pop up. I just watched Endless and Resolution yeah. on Shutter, and I think Spring was suggested to me. So I think it's there. That makes um, sense. So, and especially since you were saying it's been popping in and out, I want to watch it before it disappears on me. Yeah. But I think this was, this was fun, and I definitely. Uh, I like that they have all this hidden shit. So yeah, I'll definitely check out more stuff. Well, we'll be back then. Uh, I I think my next pick then is going to be Horns. Super cool because I read the book years episode. ago, but I never saw the movie. So I'll be tempted to reread the book actually. Although I think I don't think I have it anymore. But um, you can download it on Kindle, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. Or I can probably read find it a copy pretty easy. Um, Watch. Watch the movie first, though, because, I mean, they have, I love the book. In fact, I think you sent me the book um, when it came out many, many, many years ago. <laughs> I love the book. I also love the movie. There are things that are changed. If it's been that long since you've read the book, watch the watch movie the first, movie first because then you'll be more accepting, I, at least for me. No, you're right. You're 100 percent right. It, if if I've been distanced from it, but it's something that I loved, and it's usually better for me to watch the movie first because if I read the book first, and it's a book that I loved, then I'm I'm overly critical of the movie, and mm -hmm. it's I mean, I think it's a beautiful movie. It's it does have some deviations, but I don't think that it hurts the heart of the story. Okay. And it is available. I checked. Um, you can either watch it free on Freebie with ads, if for you and for anybody listening who likes to follow along, um, or you can rent it on Prime without ads for. I think it was it was three ninety nine or two ninety nine. Okay. Under five bucks. Cool. I'm looking forward to it. Good reason to finally fucking see that. Okay. I'm well, kind of the, mind blown that you haven't seen it. <laughs> I mean, it, I was actually waiting. It's the same thing. Like I just mentioned to somebody the other day, like I, I finally read fight club like two years ago and they're like, really? I'm like, dude, I really? love the movie so much. <laughs> I love the movie so much. I read every other Palinuk. I'm just like, I'm not going to like the book until I get the movie. So I just abstained from watching the movie for years and then read the book. And, you know, I just was afraid I was going to be too, like you said, overly critical okay. or whatever. Mm -hmm. In re but in reverse. Watch horns with Kirsten. I think she'll really like it. Okay, that's cool. All right. Well, so for the elements of horror, I'm Sean. And I'm Missy. And we bid you adieu. <laughs>